Geek Tank Radio, News Talk 98.9, the roar of Memphis. Welcome, everyone. We are the Geek Patrol, and our microphones don't have a stun setting. This episode of Geek Tank Radio is brought to you by Neil Gaiman's Mind Bleach, guaranteed to wash away all of the horrifying images he put in there after watching Sandman. I'm sorry, Alan. Uh, I mean, I would like to unsee a lot of that stuff. It's you, uh, you can't blame Neil for that. He just described it. I'm, I'm saluting his marketing skills. He gets you coming and going. He, he torments you, <laughs> horrifies you, shocks you, and then gets gets money to uh, erase those images. So, I mean, pretty good business model. Uh, anyway, that's what I came up with this week, so let's just move along. <laughs> anyway, Obviously, to, uh, Sandman has affected you in worse ways than just the bleach. No, yeah. I, I think he's still on the upside down. I'll Absolutely. But anyway, welcome to uh, Geek Tank Radio, everybody. I'm Joe Thorderson here with my friends Brandon Olmstead and Alan Gilbreth and our buddy Max over there behind the glass. And momentarily, we're going to be introducing a uh, special guest. But uh, before that, speaking Stop of... Stop saying he's special. Um, okay, anyway. He's one of us. Uh, Unfortunately. <laughs> speaking of Sandman, um, please don't think we've forgotten about it. But this, this, um, the more we talk off the air and the more we discuss Sandman, it's turning into a bigger conversation. Let's, and we are not. And I'm gonna just going to be. I'm just going to be honest with you. Yeah. I am. I'm watching it with my with my wife. We don't have as much time together because of her new work schedule. Right. So I'm not done yet. So that's the real reason we're not talking. I about binged it. it. I finished it pretty fast. I was I was done with it within a few that's days. That's what she said. Um, oh. Shut up. Okay. So <laughs> anyway, but here's the interesting thing. I've been talking to Max about about the Sandman, and I'm very well familiar with the um, with the source material. I read it when it came out. I've got the graphic novels. I um, it might surprise people that I'm a big Sandman fan if they know anything about me. <laughs> if but, they uh, know anything about you, they, they will obviously know you're a Sandman fan. But what's, Most people don't realize you're an industrial goth fan from the 80s. I'm, I mean, yeah, mm. I sound like just some boring Or that he used to have, nerd. like, MacGyver hair. Right. <laughs> but but what's interesting about how this is playing out is Max has not read Sandman. He's not, um, he, he's not familiar with the source material because when I'm watching this, I'm just like, what is somebody going to think that knows nothing about this? Is it even going to make sense? Is it, you know, and so it's it's going to be interesting to, to uh, see how this plays out among the fans and among the new fans, you could say. Yeah. So, and it, it's, you know, it's definitely worth watching, folks. So we want to do a comprehensive Sandman thing. And we can't do that today because we have other other fish to we, fry. We do have business to attend to. Uh, mm-hmm. Later in the show, we're going to let Brandon vent, which is always exciting and always it's, entertaining, uh, about the, the WB and the Discovery Network. Uh, uh, Warner Brothers Discovery, <laughs> man. If Great launch, if, isn't it? I, Things I'm, are I'm going smooth like, as silk, right? If, yeah. if, if they... They would be the kind of people who could take a billion (laughs) dollars and lose it in the couch. Okay. (laughs) That's how bad they are right now. I I say, Joe, smooth as silk. Have you ever asked the silkworm how it goes? Yeah, no kidding. There you go. I always like Brandon's metaphor. He he described uh, (laughs) Anime Blues Con as dumping a kid's toy box out on the floor, and that's the convention. I said, okay. That that that, that, that that first Anime Blues Con, that's exactly how I felt. It was like... Everything's here to play with, right? Yeah. So there's so we're just making sure into those types of things. And speaking of conventions, it's time to uh, introduce our special guest. Uh, it's an old friend of ours, Josh Mason from Mason Studio. What's up, guys? How are y'all doing? Yeah, we've met. <laughs> Josh, it seems good, like man. it seems like just yesterday we had you on the on the show talking about uh, the inaugural Covington mm. Comic Con, the first one ever, and suddenly it's back for it's number back. two, year two. Yeah, we're excited about it. So, wow, didn't uh, win the if, first time. If, that's right. Yeah. If it feels like it was just yesterday. <laughs> that bleach was way too strong. It for does, me. honestly. Time <laughs> this year has gone pretty fast. But but Josh, you guys, uh, fool, uh, is it foolishly or uh, with that Captain Kirk spirit, you jumped in created your own comic uh, comic con you used to be you know you've been coming to our convention since like uh Gosh, at least 20, 10 2012. Years. Yeah. So, yeah, right at 10 years. This will be the 10th year I've been attending Comic Con. So, MCFC 2012 was my first convention ever. And uh, all the years of going to the different cons and stuff kind of inspired me and got me thinking, you know, maybe one day I might want to start my own convention. Well, I mean, let's just, let's just face it. Uh, you know, out in Covington last year, I met a ton of people who didn't realize that this kind of stuff happened in our area at all. Oh yeah, every I still I meet people every day you who know, don't even know what comic cons are, you know, yeah. <laughs> and that's well, always surprising to me. Well, yeah, so. but it's I was thinking more along the lines of the people who are deep in the fandoms, and you know they saw the show you put on, and they were just like, "Oh, yeah. this is amazing! No one ever does anything like that for us here in Tennessee." And it's like, "Oh, 
let us introduce you to a world. Right. Yeah. No, that's that's the best part of, of doing these doing these comic cons is that you get to introduce people to it that may have not been interested in, it, especially in Tipton County where yeah. Covington is. You know, there's there's not a big. I don't want to say a big geek audience there but you know it's it's a lot of people who aren't necessarily into that type of stuff and then a lot of those people came to the comic-con last year to come into comic-con and were like oh wow and now they're all hooked so yeah. you know mm-hmm. i think I, I think uh we're guilty for creating a lot of new geeks you know we've, last said, year. That for <laughs> yeah, we've said that for years if you've never been to a convention just go if you want a new experience and we guarantee you're going to be hooked it's right. it's for everybody honestly yeah. And uh, you got you you guys brought twelve hundred people in last year. That's yeah, impressive. Yeah, it sir. was uh, actually I think it was even a little more than that when we got the final numbers in. It was a significant turnout, way more than I think we had anticipated. And uh, so yeah, we, we met up. It was me, uh, my brother Jerry Mason, and then our good friend Tara Thompson are the three founders. Right. And uh, Tara was really the one who brought it to. We had her on our podcast, um, and she brought it to the table and was like, I'm thinking about doing a comic con. And so me and Jerry were like, Jerry looked over at me cause he knew how involved I was with like MCFC and the local cons. And we were like, Oh, oh we yeah. got to do this. And then we did it. We did it last year, last August and had that huge turnout is way more successful than we ever dreamed, <laughs> you know? And so yeah. obviously we're doing it bigger, better this year. We're doing two days instead of one. So that's exciting. Well, we, we, t- we, we talked about this last year and we, we commended you because you you avoided a lot of the mistakes that uh, happen with first year events. I, I I'll be honest, we made a ton of mistakes the first our first year. And uh, one thing was basically the whole goal is to survive it. Don't burn right. the venue down. Don't kill anybody. <laughs> mm-hmm. And don't lose a ton of money. And you did all three. I mean, but, yeah. you know. Right. Yeah, well, you were one of the first people I called, Joe. I remember after we decided to do the co- Covington Comic Con, I was like, I got to call Joe because I need it to know the do's and don'ts. And I was like, if anybody's <laughs> oh, going to know the list. do's or don'ts, <laughs> I was like, yeah. So I think I had nearly probably an hour-long conversation with Joe just about, like, Joe, what to do and what Joe not to do. Joe learned the hard way. Be glad yeah. that you have a Yoda like him. <laughs> yeah, those mess, those those, <laughs> those uh, lessons and, they ingrain themselves. Yeah. Some yeah. of that stuff's as fresh but in my it, mind as though it happened. One yesterday. of the things I have to go ahead and say is like, you know, you guys brought it in right after you know our big lockdowns were. Oh, over. Yeah. people we, were ready. We man. were getting our yeah. vaccinations finally. We people were like, I need to be around other people, right? And you hit it That's at true. just the right time. Yeah. No, our and timing was on, perfect. And you put it. on an amazing show as it was. Well, thank you. But I mean, even even still, it's like that many people on your first year event yeah, yeah we were dude, that's, very that's, shocked that is amazing the the most humbling part of it for me wasn't just the fact that we did have such a big turnout but it was also seeing so many of the memphis regulars the people who attend yeah. mcfc the cosplayers and some of the vendors and all my friends that i've made through networking with the the comic conventions in memphis over the years seeing so many of them come out for our convention it was like there was i almost i'm not a real emotional person but right. i almost shed a tear over it i was like you don't know, do that i don't want to see you that, that would ruin <laughs> my image of i think you, the, but yeah, i think no. the closest i've ever seen you to crying was uh was drunken sing-along for the greatest showman oh yeah that and was that was probably the closest to, i've come i don't yeah. think it had anything to do with the emotion of the movie so much as the uh you know why, yeah, are, yeah. why are you butchering the songs behind me? And of oh, course, yeah. don't watch a Michael Bay Transformers movie with Josh. He will. Get I'll emotional. get very, very emotional watching a Michael yeah, Bay Transformers. Yeah, but that's frustrating. Yeah. <laughs> Anger. Well, Josh, no, that's just him going. I could have made that explosion so much bigger. Oh no, no one's no one's better than Saint Michael the Bay. Oh know? yeah, <laughs> that's pretty good. So, Josh, we've observed this in our years of going to conventions. We've been to some conventions in you know. Big cities. We've been to conventions, and you know, Memphis is a call. I'd call it a medium-sized city. But then again, you sometimes you go to these conventions, like Alan. You've been to conventions in Tupelo. You've been to conventions where it's not necessarily a huge city, and yet everybody turns up. And I have to believe it's because, like, okay, well. No offense, Josh, but what else are you going to do in Covington? Right. Yeah, <laughs> it's no, it's like, true. Yeah. Suddenly you're the featured event. You're not because, okay, growing up in Chicago on any given weekend, there's like literally 500 different things to do. So, so getting an audience to focus on your event is very difficult, but with a, smaller towns sometimes that's the recipe for success man it's oh like yeah you no, get I the mean, whole town to turn up it, so. it was uh it's definitely that's a big part of it i think is the fact that there it is Covington and there just isn't that much to do but then also <laughs> there there is the fact that we try to schedule it and i think most people who run conventions i'm sure you know this joe but anybody who runs a con you try to schedule it where you're not competing necessarily with other local conventions right yeah don't and do it so, dragon con weekend yeah because so, yeah. then you cannibalize <laughs> your audience you know right. and then that you split the audience and so we we try to schedule 
schedule it where there's not like a whole lot else going on in the Memphis area around that time. And then um, also just the fact that we do bring in a lot of people from the surrounding areas, from Jackson, Dyersburg, Memphis, right. you know. And so, uh, yeah, but I, I was very pleased with the turnout last year. We're hoping for at least yeah. equal, if not, you know, bigger turnout this year. And we'll see what happens. See, I was going to say a minute ago, it's like there's a lot of really good hidden stuff that goes on in Covington. But when I think about it, your brother's involved in 90% of that. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, we – so <laughs> – He's yeah. the Don out there. Yeah, but, yeah. We, we're sort of like the – I think there's some people may even refer to us as the Mason Mafia out yeah. there in, yeah. in, in Covington. But, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm his marketing director at his law firm, so I handle all his marketing. Of course, I do Mason Studios, which is all the film production stuff. I just launched a digital marketing company, so that's exciting. And then Jerry uh, – has a, the martial arts studio, Mason's right. Martial Arts, and then he also is a co-owner of the Cellar Restaurant, which right. is one of the, um, I'll say, how do I put it? Um, it's a better, speakeasy, man. Yeah, it's it's. They it's, definitely have some of the best steaks it's, in Tipton it's, County. It's I'll put got that, that mm-hmm. really old timey. Like, I shouldn't be in here because of Prohibition right. feel to it. Well, that, I awesome. think that was what it, they were going for. Yeah, yeah it was definitely well, the 1920s, it. yeah, yeah kind of Prohibition-era bar. So, uh, but yeah, yeah, we're just, we're involved in a lot of stuff. What were you saying, Alan? Well, I was going to call him out on all of that, yeah. but he just oh. listed it, so I'm yeah. good. Oh. <laughs> uh, I, I'm, I'm going to throw, uh, I'm going to throw him the, my, my usual compliment I say about, about Josh every year is right, wrong, indifferent. If Josh says he's going to do something. He gets it done. It, it happens. <laughs> I appreciate it that. Happens. Yeah. Lord help you on some of the things you've gotten done, but <laughs> as, as we all know, because right. Well, last year when the first time we heard about the convention, we we're like coming out of a pandemic. You're going to do this in Covington. You're going to be like, and everybody's like, nah. And I'm like, no, no, this is going to happen, y'all. Yeah. Y'all, y'all need to get 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 it together. It's going to happen. Yeah, how long did and, you spend spend planning last year? Um, well, last year we did about I think it was five mm-hmm. five to six months. Pro- okay, like when we from the time we decided we were going to do it until that August, and then of course this not year a lot of lead time. It's yeah. not. No, it wasn't. This year, uh, it's been way way better because we have literally been planning since the end of the last one, so we've had a full year to plan this one. And then the other thing that has been um, very helpful is because it's our second year. This year, it's been way less stressful in oh, the planning yeah. because like we already did did it once it was a success right. it does so get easier this yeah. year yeah it's definitely like i'm not nearly as stressed about it this year as i was last year you know i feel like i can kind of relax a little more and maybe enjoy the convention a little more than oh, I, I was able to <laughs> <laughs> it's like the second kid you know, yeah, yeah, that's right. Like, yeah, know, it is. I, yeah. You fell and you're crying. Do I see a bone? Are you bleeding? No, you're fine. <laughs> Get up. Have a band aid. Yeah. So I was about to, uh, my my big question would be to anybody considering a convention, what was your big takeaway from last year? That was your mantra for this year. As far as you mean, like changes that need to be made or things Just that were successful. Or... What did you What did you walk when you walk out of there? You always have that. You dust yourself off. You say, "I survived it." Right. But then, then you have that next horrible thought. Yeah. What am I going to do next so, year? For me, it was the minute I dropped the last because we did have a couple guests. We flew in, and I remember after it was all over with, we had packed everything up, everything was done, and then I dropped the last guest off at the airport for them to fly back out. And that was kind of the last little piece of work I had to do on the convention after yeah. it was all over. And as I was driving home from the airport, the kind of thought occurred to me, and I was like, "We did it." Because, I mean, it was like this thing that I had thought about for all these years, how I wanted to do a comic convention. And then it was like, wait a minute, we pulled it off. And so my second thought then was, well, we did it. So that means we can do it again. And we can (laughs) do it bigger and better. (laughs) And, uh, you know, and so once you, it's kind of one of those things where you realize once you can do something like that, you kind of feel almost like a superhero in a way. You know, it's like the sky's the limit on what, what is possible. And I think that's part of the reason why just two weeks after that, was when I launched the digital marketing agency because I was like, well, I'm not going to stop there. Why not? You know, I'm not going to stop at just one or two companies. Right. Why not have like, you know, 50 or, <laughs> you know, 100? Like, why not? So it definitely gives yeah. you this sense of accomplishment. Like, you know, you, you get this feeling like you can really do anything you right. know, because of how successful it is. Now, there's always the possibility, of course, you know, you could have a year where it may not do as well or attendance might be down. You know, I'm very aware of all that. But, uh, yeah, we were just very pleased with how it all turned out last year let, let me share an observation uh josh because i'm okay the first year of the memphis comic and fantasy Convention, we don't talk about that we went year. to a venue totally <laughs> this is all on my shoulders too expensive it was too too it was it, we should have started like mm-hmm. you did i spent more money on the venue than i should have that's our bruno year yeah um <laughs> didn't didn't market it as effectively it's not because we didn't try it's just we spent resources and you know whatever just whatever right. it, and the 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 impression I got when it was over is like okay 
I more or less broke even. Mm -hmm. We didn't get nearly the attendance I wanted, but what I felt was this sense of this is a blank slate. Next year mm -hmm. can be totally different. And in fact, we moved to a different venue. Mm -hmm. We did, we made a lot of changes. So leading up to it, it's almost like birthing pains. It's like, okay, it yeah. happens, it's over, the convention happened, and then it's a brand we, new clean slate. The clean slate effect happens to me every year, and right. I do appreciate that. It's like, okay, we tried this one program, it didn't work. Yeah. We tried this other, it was super successful. Then you just build on what well, 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 it's works, like everything. So. Everything is a learning experience. You yeah, know, yeah, even stuff Brandon that you might. Well, you know. I was, was going to say we are four biological dudes sitting in a thing. I don't think we're allowed to talk about birthing pangs, Joe. Okay, that's what you're hung True. up. On. It's whatever it, just, it is. It's like so, but it's but, kidney yeah. stones. Kidney there stones. you go. There you go. Yeah. But 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 Josh, there's also you've created something, and now it has to happen every year. Oh You yeah, may want to yeah. take a year off, and that uh, <laughs> that's not an option anymore. Well, sir. No, here's, no, not at all. The uh, thing that, here's the thing. I'm going to piece of advice I'll give to you. Put, make sure that you have a staff around yourself that you can trust yeah so that you can step back you know in a year or two where you can like go all right i'm just here to enjoy it right and clean up anything you break well i'm we're lucky in That's, that the the two other partners are really good partners obviously yeah. i trust my brother jerry very much you know he's been involved in so many businesses and things and marketing and all that and then yeah. tara is just a genuinely very good person like yeah. genuinely to her core is a great person so i think as far as they're concerned there's a great group of people to be teamed up with and then the volunteers we had last year were just phenomenal they were always going around checking on the vendors yeah. making sure everybody was good to go had water and everything like that so i mean we've got a really solid team so uh i think that was part of the reason it was such a success right you know last year and hopefully we can just keep repeating that year after year but i don't i don't want to take a year off i want to like do two of them a year or, you know they're not necessarily right. like in covington right, but right. you know i yeah. i would love to well, yeah. do more comic cons <laughs> other places and things <laughs> really? like that Oh yeah, yeah I'd like yeah. to talk to you about this after the show. Yeah, we can do. We can definitely discuss it. Yeah, I'm but, all um, about it. I'm going to jump in here with this question before Alan because I can see it's like the thought bubble above his head. So, uh, <laughs> what's on the menu this year as far as mm -hmm. you know your trucks and everything that are coming into? Oh, sport? we've got so much going on. So, of course, the DeSoto County Ghostbusters are bringing their Ecto 17 back out. They right. got mad at me because I referred to it as the Ecto one, and they made yeah. it very mm -hmm. clear it is not the Ecto one. It no. is the Ecto 17. So they're not interested yeah. in getting sued. So. Yes, so yeah. they'll be there. They'll actually be there, even though the convention is that Saturday and Sunday. Uh, it's August 20th and 21st. They'll be there that Friday night, August the 19th, because for, for we're the, yeah we're going to be screening the original Ghostbusters film at the Ruffin Theater. Yeah. And then that day on Saturday from 9 to 5, we'll have the vendor room open. We'll have panels running throughout the day. We'll have the cosplay contest. Right. And then that night, after we close the doors at 5, we're going to be screening the Superman, the original Superman, Christopher Reeve film at the Ruffin Theater at 7 p.m. And uh, both of those film screenings are free admission, by the way. So you don't even have oh. to have a pass to the con to get in any body can come to those huh. i was about uh, to ask you legally how you do that but if it's free it's legal yeah it's to just do free that. Yeah. free to the community yeah, um and then you. um that sunday we open the doors at one and we run from one to five and same thing we'll have the vendor room open one to five and then we'll have some more panels and things going on that sunday um so yeah a lot of exciting stuff a lot of great guest you know that we'll have there we'll have rick prince who was on uh, sci-fi's face off show he's cool. a makeup artist and you know filmmaker we'll have uh, some tiktokers we'll have uh, bam bam bundy who's uh, with the tennessee championship wrestling mm -hmm. he's their heavyweight champion cool. so he'll be there and uh you know a couple of repeat guests that we had from last year uh but it yeah a lot of exciting yeah. stuff so hopefully everybody will come out and see us um we'll be set up there we'll have our promo booth for oh. uh for geek tank and for we will be uh yeah. Uh, the Memphis Comic and Fantasy Convention. Is it is it correct to say that uh, the Covington Comic Con is a spawn of the Memphis Comic oh, and Fantasy Convention? Oh, 100%. Convention? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so <laughs> we, we talked about this An last outgrowth. year. So I think Don't on last year's show, <laughs> we even said we were like, uh, I, I was, or we were both calling it a sister convention to MCFC, and we we're like, well, let's wait and see what it does first. Let's see <laughs> if it's a success or not. And so, yeah, we don't want you to be. Yeah, we're not going to allow give you sibling status until totally, you know, right. Yeah, but I, I think totally, it's very safe to say totally uh, give you sibling status. It, it's definitely a spawn yeah. of uh, MCFC. So, <laughs> so Josh, you basically because you were at the first, you were at the first Memphis com. I mean, you were your first convention was Memphis Comic and Fantasy Convention right. 2012, which is one of my favorites. It's when we had Tom Kenny, the voice of SpongeBob. Oh, yeah. We had a, a great all guest. sorts of new things. We moved into a big venue. We were really clicking. 
And you said we you had were instantly seven billion children. You were instantly <laughs> hooked into, and then you were hitting conventions every other. Oh yeah, no, I was I month. was immediately hooked, and it was all Alan's fault too, because he drugged me in that. Him and Tanya Vandesty drugged mm-hmm, me right. in the room of when y'all had the Geek One Hundred One, yep. mm-hmm. and uh, just thousands of children, and they were yeah, doing we a panel on. Stage, it oh was 400 yeah, four hundred kids, but I know it feels it like felt thousands, it felt like so, a yeah. thousand. Yeah, okay. uh, so yeah. they threw me on stage, and then of course right after that panel, I get bombarded by all these children because Alan is telling them going on and on about what a great film. Maker I am, <laughs> and uh, and from that point on, I was just hooked. I was like, yeah, I was like, this is my family now. I was like, I I found my people. <laughs> oh, so the roots of your excitement was that it fed your ego. Okay, I that's thought right. This was yes, about yes. the celebration <laughs> of the arts and, and, and I knew the exactly how to play Josh. Just get him on the stage up there. All it was right. the same reason Alan got hooked. So, oh. hey Josh, uh, we're about to go to break. How do people find out more about Covington Comic Con? So you can go to www.covingtoncomiccon.com or you can check us out on Facebook, and you got all the information on there. Panel schedule guest lineup all that covington comic con number two it's coming up folks it's going to be a lot of fun and as we said we'll be there we're going to talk a little bit more about it when we come back but also we're going to let brandon uh rage about wb discovery you're listening to geek tank radio your news talk 98.9 the roar memphis we'll be right back geek tank radio and i for one welcome our new insect overlords like to remind them that as a trusted tv personality uh I can be helpful in rounding up others to toil in their underground sugar caves. News Talk 98.9, the roar of Memphis. And we're happy to stand that, alongside him. We're part of the media, right? We that, get special privileges. That honestly makes me want to watch Peacemaker again. <laughs> Until the insects start attacking you all. Yeah. Maybe they don't like our content and we're the first to go. Mm, Who knows? Know. You never know. Mm. Either way, the uh, insect overlord takeover is going to make things interesting. Mr. Insect Overlords, I have I am not responsible for the nature of their content. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and welcome back to uh, Geek that Tank Radio. That might get you eaten. Yes. <laughs> Uh, welcome back to uh, Geek Tank Radio. I'm Joe Thorderson here with my friends Brandon Olmstead and Alan Gilbreth and our buddy Max behind the glass and our pal Josh Mason, who, Josh, we, we need to get in here more often in, than just once a year. Oh, yeah, I'd be all for it. But uh, Covington Comic Con number two is coming up. We've been talking about that. But off the air, Brandon, you you showed us something <sighs> interesting, and I think this is worth a, a diversion before we get back to our conversation. But uh, You showed I, him I, a sparkly video. And you know, I'm always interested in Harry Potter content. I, well, as long as it's not Fantastic Beast, because... That's, a, that's hey, its own look, story. Look, but look, hey, look. hey, hey, the right sauce, man. I'm telling you, anything is, is servable. This is actual <laughs> statistical evidence that you that you right, brought to right. us, right? Um, so. I don't know how how uh, and it's actually important accurate. it is, <laughs> right? But you know, use you know, there's a, there's a map that was put out, and I I had the information here about who put the map out, and it's not on the map, which agitates me. But it was based, it was somebody uh, who who de- deals in travel. Uh, oh, it's a around, travel thing. around okay. the U.S. and yeah. they uh, they they worked with Pottermore, where you know everybody goes to do their you know their house test to figure out what the percentages were of you know who which houses you know populate which states. Right. And um, yeah, we came down to it, and Joe, you're a Gryffindor. You, well, we you, should explain. You, yeah, you, you will run headfirst into danger or recklessness. <laughs> One of the things like, they created after the books were over is this this website called Pottermore, and it, it's pretty fun. Honestly, there's a lot of stuff on there, but among others, you take a psychological test, and it'll tell you what house, house you're right, sorted into. Right. I was a Gryffindor. You're a Ravenclaw. I'm a Ravenclaw. Big guess which house Alan got put in. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Slytherin. I don't know any Hufflepuff. Yeah. Who do we know that's a Hufflepuff? Um, uh, te- actually, my wife's a Hufflepuff. Okay, um, so. Uh, there's there's a handful of folks who, uh, who you know, rock out at the MCFC who will... Gladly fly their Hufflepuff flags. Josh, you said you'd like to be in Ravenclaw, right? Yeah, I, feel, I just feel yeah. like that's probably where I would now, be put. Yeah, Max, okay. I think, is in Ravenclaw, too. Yeah, that's a good Yeah, fix. I'm in Ravenclaw, <laughs> too. Which, so, which is awesome because the highest percentage of Potterheads in Tennessee identify as Ravenclaw. So it's Potterheads, not Potheads. Right, so right, right. So if you look at this breakdown, it shows you the... And this is actual statistics from the Pottermore. So this isn't right. just speculate. This no, is this somebody's is, opinion. This right, is, right. The statistics, which is yeah. interesting. I wouldn't have thought we we're a, I would have thought we're more of a Gryffindor or even, I hate to say it, a Slytherin state. We, we, we aren't. We aren't. We, we, or maybe we're a Hufflepuff. We, we're just kind of. There's a lot of us who think we're smarter than we are. Yeah. Like the Ravenclaws. We're very studious <laughs> in the things that we love. And uh, we're, a, we're not as selfless as, you know, the Gryffindors. We're not as selfish as the Slytherins. Or maybe we're just lazy. 
I was very <laughs> it's proud. It's not selflessness. It's pragmatism. There I was very go. proud to be sorted into Gryffindor, but if I'm being completely honest, uh, Brandon, now that you know I feel like there's a superiority complex in Gryffindor. Like, it's like, I'm a Gryffindor. Like, okay. you know, there, there, I feel like, yeah, remember, which is not necessarily a good thing. Remember, one thing, remember one one thing, right, one thing we've saying. learned from yeah. the books and the movies and everything else is you don't necessarily get put in the house that you belong. You get put in the house that the, the Sorting Hat thinks would be fun for you to be in. Because remember, <laughs> he's the, the Sorting Hat said Harry belonged in Slytherin. Yep, that's a good point. But he asked not to be. When right. We want to get he into a side trip, and that me, so he, made him worthy it, of Gryffindor. It took him. I don't know how much wor how, mm. how how worthy I would call that. <laughs> you know, because let's be honest, when it came as as much as Harry, Harry Potter was the chosen one, as much as all that. Um, he wasn't very good at what he does. Hmm. He's he solved most of his problems through luck and Hermione. Um, all right. Well, let's mm -hmm. not. But Brandon, here's the here's the revelation to right. me. In looking at the map of the United it's States, very green. it's very dominated yeah. by Slytherin, which so, that so is not a good thing for we're me. Gonna, in the we're, United States, gonna, I don't like to think we're a we're Slytherin gonna, country, but. Where have you been the past? The seven statistics years? have spoken. <laughs> so, well. All right, but I'm going to tell you, it, it goes like this. And we're going to start with the le lesser, you know, Gryffindor has three states. Okay. Hufflepuff has five. <laughs> Ravenclaw has 16. And Slytherin has 27. Jeez. I, I would have not figured that. I would have thought I we would be a bunch of Hufflepuffs, Well, the honestly. thing is, is Slytherin, is, Slytherin is based in ambition. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And ambition, I mean, look at the American dream. It's all about ambition. Mm, I so still while, feel like while, we, we've while got the, more nobility while, here, while, but okay. Nobility has nothing to do with it. <laughs> I want to see like the rather than like a Potter more like the like I'm a Star Wars equivalent like which I'm a which manner of I'm a force user do you fall into? Will the majority of the United States fall to the dark side or are they like gray Jedi the, or Jedi? Oh, the, gosh, the majority of the know. United States won't fall into any Jedi category. They will be they will be like the Mandalorians. They will be mercenaries. All right. Well, hey, this is not you know my feelings about America. I, we're starting to get in uh <laughs> I am not, I'm in, I am not in any through, shape, but. form, or fashion putting our country down. <sighs> anyway. I am a capitalist. Welcome, Josh, welcome to the multiverse. <laughs> well, I'm a capitalist. <laughs> that puts me into the category of a mercenary. I'm All a right. Mandalorian. <laughs> All anyway. right. Well, anyway, I would have never guessed but, we're a Slytherin but we were talking, country. We were talking about Harry I, Potter, I was... and that rolls right into the WB. And let's talk about some really agitating news. Okay. All right, I want I want the ninety I want the ninety million. So no no no. So <laughs> Josh, so, if we get our right. hands on that dude, we will make a movie. And Josh, oh, yeah, we're going to circle yeah. back and, and touch on Covington Comic Con number two. But let's let yeah. Van, let's let Brandon uh, well, vent. This well, is first fun. Of all, Here we go. I know Josh is on board with me on. Oh this. yeah, no, I'm kind of I'm kind of agitated yeah. about what they're doing. Now, there's yeah. a lot now, to if, vent about. Here's the thing: if Batgirl was testing extremely poorly, I could understand wanting to change some stuff. I also understand that it was made for a streaming service in what was basically going to be a 90-minute to two-hour-long TV pilot, basically. So they made the Batgirl movie. They right. finished the entire They're, thing, and well, then they no, canceled it's it. Not, it's not completely finished. It's in post-production. There's not it's a whole lot left enough. to do. Yeah. It was a $90 million movie, and it got shelved. We will never see it. $90 million. $70 million, I mean, $70 million budget, uh, $20 million in post-production. Josh, so, Josh knows what the what, what this goes. Into. Oh yeah, so nobody's even talking about the person who's like, I guess, taking the biggest hit in all of this, which is not just with the Batgirl movie, but now you know with everything going on with the Flash film, where they're yeah. not real sure what they're going to do with it. Yeah. Both movies are supposed or were supposed to be the return of, of Michael, Michael Keaton's, Keaton's Batman. Batman, and now it's looking like there's yeah. a possibility which, we won't get to see that. Which, so. which it's true with all the with all the. You know stuff surrounding Ezra Miller right now with with the Flash, uh, that you know that movie's already been pushed back, and we know that Keaton had filmed a Batman scene for Aquaman too, and now they have gone back and refilmed that scene with, with ben, ben, Affleck. ben Affleck. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. So there's. But is, right. <laughs> is the calculation here that it's better to just cut your losses than have a movie come out and there, get all sorts of criticism and there maybe was bomb or a, there was a chance uh -huh. right now with certain projects that were started before the merger that they could get a really good tax break by just putting them away and you know they, oh, a they're, tax break. they're, ta that. they're talking about you know it's like well you know it doesn't 
stand up. It doesn't match the standards we want for a tent pole movie in theaters. It wasn't supposed to be. Batgirl wasn't supposed to be. But the real tragedy in all of this, and it's like I wanted to see the Batgirl movie. I I love Leslie Grace and In the Heights. I, I wanted to see what she did with the character. I wanted to see Keaton back in the uh, role in, mm-hmm. the, in the suit. I love the idea of J.K. Simmons as Commissioner Gordon, and I have since the you know Zack Snyder first announced him for Justice League. I, I, I love all of that stuff. And I can understand shelving it if it just was a bad movie. But based on the directors as well, who gave us Bad Boys for Life, which, as cheesy as it was, it was a good time. But they also gave us episodes of Miss Marvel, which were also very well received. It's, it sucks that this will never see the light of day. But at the same time, they shelved Scoob, right. a, you know, a, haunted, a ha- haunted Holiday or whatever it is, and you can't tell me that you weren't going to make money off a Scooby Doo movie. Well, you know, there's a lot of things about the Batgirl movie I was super excited yeah. about, like Commissioner Gordon, right. Michael Keaton's return, just all these different things that seemed the like the Burnside I was like, suit because that's probably the best Batman right. suit they've ever had. I was, I mean, there's just so much, th- so many things about it. I was like, yeah, this could be a great film. And I get to thinking about, all, you know, all my years of independent filmmaking, and there have been a couple of films in all the years I've been doing it that I did end up canceling or you know canceled halfway through filming or whatever. Right. But the difference is, some of those movies I might have spent like you know fifty dollars, maybe right. two hundred dollars, <laughs> like it's very. Yeah. Small amounts of money. It's not yeah. none of those were ninety million dollar films. See, and, so. and 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 you know, and the thing was is you know we we take this hit about Batgirl and it sucks. We wanted to see this movie. We didn't care if it was going to be bad. We pretty much knew it was going to be bad. We still wanted to see this movie because of nostalgia almost. Right. Yeah. But then you start seeing other things that are falling along the wayside. Uh, the the Sasha Kale uh, Supergirl movie, which was another spinoff from the Flash movie. That's a gone. But meanwhile, the Green Lantern TV series, which is going to probably cost, you know, upwards of $90 million an episode. You can't do the go- Green Lantern it's, cheap. I mean, it's, it's still going yeah. forward. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, the- Strange Adventures, which was an Adam Strange thing that Kevin Smith was doing for HBO Max, is gone. DC needs a Kevin Feige is they, what they, they need. No, yes. Josh, well, no. not not to me. No, they, I don't mean no, that. No. Let me you let me explain me. that. So okay, not yeah. that no. it needs to be in the tone of the Marvel no, films, they need, but they, they need, need a someone, director they need who. Someone like, and I thought I can pull it all together. Yeah. I they haven't found one. I thought they were going to get it when Alan Horn signed on with them because, you know, him and Bob Iger gave you Kevin Feige and the uh, and the MCU and Star Wars TV series and all that. They are the ones who brought all that stuff together. You can talk about Kathleen Kennedy. You can talk about John Favreau. When it was all said and done, those two are the ones who set up the thing. So Alan Horn gets over there. But what we learned more on during the WB earnings uh, call is that David Zaslav should not be in charge of an entertainment company. I know that people say, well, Discovery is entertainment. Yeah, but it's unscripted. It, it has its own flow. And he has proven he doesn't know what he's doing. Hmm. You know, and it just... It just it seems like the DC universe is all over the place, well, you know? Well, See, but, even, so. <laughs> even with the DC universe all over the place, if that's the direction you wanted to go with it, you could still make that entertaining and profitable. What David Zaslav is trying to do is he's trying to copy something that was lightning in a bottle. You're not going to get – everybody who's tried to copy the Marvel formula has failed miserably. Yeah, but, but I don't even think the Marvel formula is going to continue it, to work for them. It, I think they're going to have to change direction too because – Brandon, you it, and I talked about no, this. No, this will no, be another discussion right, but about it, the ups and downs well, of interconnectivity. The, the problem, the problem with Marvel's interconnectivity is that they are refusing to evolve as audiences evolve. They are, you know, they're trying to give you the same cookie cutter stuff they gave you through fa- through phases one through three, mm-hmm. and we're looking for something new. You don't go back into the, you know, it's like, Alan, you'll you'll get this one. <laughs> You're a chef. You're learning. You make your way up to the point where you do a five course banquet meal for somebody that immediately it's like you get all sorts of rave reviews. You know, the you know Michelin stars, everything under the sun. And then you want to go back and start with those, you know, those, you know, really cheesy, you know, overly starched biscuits you did in the beginning. Mm-hmm. That's what that's what Marvel has done in Phase Four. Yeah, I feel I feel like Phase Four has. I love the Marvel Cinematic Universe, one yeah. of my favorite franchises ever. Love Phases One through Three, and there's been aspects of yeah. Phase Four I've enjoyed, but I do feel like Phase Four has. 
lacked a certain yeah. level of direction or continuity yeah. that the pre- yeah. like I, it's yeah. sort of like I don't really know where they're going with it. It's right, it's, <laughs> you it, know. and it's because they're trying they're trying to reset without resetting. Right, and you gave us in game. You that was your pinnacle. You need to give us something weird and different, but not derivative. Which, yeah, I feel like yeah. this multiverse is trying to be too epic. I wouldn't mind just some single yeah. stories well, or just some, you know, which, which my, is my all focused grand. on individual characters. Which is, which is all grand, and yeah. I'm not trying to talk over you, Josh, but uh, Alan's over there like, you know, oh, I, 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 I want right. to speak. Yeah. <laughs> His head's starting to vibrate. And I want to get one more point from him before we move as far away from the MCU as humanly possible. Well, here's your problem with derivation and evolution. You've now written half the script. You have to make this point. You have to have this scene. You have to show that this flashback from three movies ago or eight movies ago or this plot point now has to be here. And then another one-third of your script is come from everybody else's scripts because now you need to repaint that fire hydrant yellow because in the next movie, everybody's going to meet at the yellow fire hydrant. So the problem is now, as anybody that's ever written in a series of books will tell you, is now you have so much required concrete in your building, you don't have a whole lot left for a new building. It limits the creativity you can do. Absolutely. And that's what the multiverse should have been able to do is open it up where they didn't have to worry about continuity, but instead they're just sticking in line, and that's what's screwing up at the MCU in a it's still a it fun, it's still a fun direction but oh, it's yeah. just if i miss if i miss an mcu movie right now until it comes out on streaming i don't care well my, my only issue with it is i don't understand the rules of the multiverse like i, I feel oh. like we've had five or six projects now in this phase That's, that have had various elements of the multiverse introduced yeah. and they all some of them i feel like contradict one another to a certain mm-hmm. degree well, see, mm-hmm. and that's, i'm like what are the rules of right, the multiverse so that's, that's, <laughs> that's, that's, the, that's the fun thing is that there are no real rules to the multiverse. Marvel's trying to give you this, you know, this, like, it must be this, and they are wrong. And DC did it amazing in comic form Mm -hmm. for years uh, with the, you know, with uh, the Elseworlds books. You know, yeah, okay, we got a Batman, but he's a pirate. (laughs) The Joker's a pirate, and and Robin's a cabin boy, and it was epic and amazing. And if someone made that movie... I would be in line first thing. Leather. You're talking about Elseworld, I mean, Elseworld right. stories. Yes, yeah. those are multiverse stories, different Earths. But 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 uh, you said something important to me because I told you I'm just not feeling it with the multiverse, and you said there's no rules. To me, that lessens the consequences exactly. and it lessens the stakes because I'm like, going, okay, well, yeah. I'm this just, universe right. blew up. I got I'm, eight I'm, million I'm, others. To I'm fixing. From, I'm so fixing like, an anger. Ninety-eight percent of fandom in general. Yeah. Ooh, cool. If you are so hung up. On consequences when it comes to your entertainment, you're doing it wrong. <laughs> yeah, but if if you're watching it and it's like, okay, I want to care about this, but you're not but, giving but, me but, a but reason to thing. care about it. It's like you're caring about a fictional character. Who cares if it's Captain America from six one six or thirteen forty five? Captain America from thirteen forty five is just as important to their world as six one six is to yours. I don't know. I'm just telling you, my, you I can't you, help my emotions, if you Brandon. Can, if you can't, you know. if you can't get behind that, then you never really cared about Captain America to begin with. Don't be a gatekeeper. <laughs> I'm not tell being, me what I care. I'm about. not being a gatekeeper. I'm making an observation from someone who studied behavioralism. You just don't care about well, anything unless it affects you. Okay. And, and Brandon anyway. may have just opened the doors to what they're going to have to do with Ezra Miller. Oh, oh, no, we know what's happening with Ezra Miller. There's there, there's three options. They send him to rehab. And no, no, these are the three options that WB put on the table. I saw this the other day. You know, yeah. WB put these three options on the table, and these are this is based mm-hmm. on what he, what what David Zaslav, he has put this mandate out to the rest of the studio. Because there's $300 these are the, million these are dollars the things, tied up in the, the Flash movies, movie. The movie's coming out one way or the other. Right, it's got to. He can't get back the money like he could with Scoob and... Uh, and well, Batgirl. Batgirl. Well, 90 so, million, I guess, is a smaller yeah, right, rock to swallow right. than so, 300 So, what are so the here's, three here's options? The Ezra can go to a facility and get help and then do an interview explaining their actions. And then and he's the, on meds. And, 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 he's better. And then the movie comes out. Right. Ezra can go to, you know, to a facility 
and uh, go through all the important treatment they need and then not be a part of the marketing for the movie. Yeah, I was going to say keep them away from the marketing, right? And the keep other one is to postpone. Straight up cancel. <laughs> well, no, the other one is to postpone the movie mm -hmm. until all of this plays out and then release the movie. That Basically might be worse because I, I thought you don't the third know option was just out. canceling it all together. Well, and just well they should cancel this one. They, yeah. This one's too big. They have they have stated this movie is going to hit theaters uh, because it you know. But they at the did same spend time, like two hundred million on yeah, it. So you know, but then again, at three oh three hundred million. At the, so there at you the go. same <laughs> time, this this big reset they've talked about it basically means that uh, this will be the last Jason Momoa Aquaman movie we get that actually folds into this continuity. This will be the only Black Adam movie we get that folds into this continuity. Mm -hmm. This is going to be the final Shazam movie we have that folds into this continuity. Uh, they have, The only DC film right now that has the green light is Joker 2. Nothing else in production has a green light, which means that everything else that we've been hearing about, uh, Wonder Woman 3, Zatanna, uh, maybe even the sequel to the Batman, though I don't think that one will be shelved, the all these projects that have been in uh you know in, in production or pre production right may just completely disappear. Well, all, we'll see. A lot of stuff that we've been looking forward to, like I don't know about a lot of y'all, but I wanted the Zatanna movie. I yep. love magic. I, I love would superheroes. Love to have seen that. The, the yeah. two of those, I would have loved to have seen this movie. Well, she's an interesting character uh, if they do it right. You know, I mean, so. we know James Gunn has 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 said that you know Peacemaker season two is safe. But he can't he can't comment past that. Uh, we have heard that you know Harley Quinn, which is currently doing its mm -hmm. uh, you know third season in animated form, their their fourth season is signed. But after that, nothing. Titans may be gone. Doom Patrol may be gone. The uh, stuff on HBO Max. Tons of original HBO Max movies have already been pulled from the service and are no longer available. They're not on. They're not on video. They're, you can't go buy a hard copy. These are just gone because they've decided we have to focus on things that aren't streaming after putting all this money into streaming. Oh my gosh. Because yeah. they have you know they have gotten what what is it 300 billion dollars in debt or, or 300 million dollars some crazy amount of money. Some <laughs> um, weird amount and then you're just like why did we buy this? Well, hey, you know what's fun to me? It's it's watching the drama unfold is almost as entertaining as uh, mm -hmm. whatever movies they're putting out. At least it's something, I don't know. It's a different kind of scenario. It's just no, sort it's of, it's, you know, it's garbage, and they need to get there together. I don't know. It's kind of <laughs> like so watching Josh, a car accident next or a train wreck. So there yeah. you there go. Yeah. yeah. Hey, Josh, uh, we don't want to run out of time though. Before we circle back, so yeah. people, if people show up at Covington Comic Con or have never been there, can you bring your kids? Oh, of course. We're actually so for anybody who's in Tipton County, all the Tipton County school kids for the elementary schools are all getting free tickets. Oh, so nice. uh, as long as they bring an adult with them and the adult purchases a ticket, they can get in for free. So there's uh, that marketing so that's a good genius. Perk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very similar, I think, in some ways to the whole geek. Oh yeah, Geek 101. Yeah. One's got a similar principle. So okay, so you can bring your family or just show up. You want That's cosplayers right. there, right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, hundred percent. We want the cosplayers. So um, yeah, but it's only ten dollars to get in each day, and then if you want to do a two day pass, it's only fifteen dollars, and that gets you access to both days. So you can save five dollars there if you plan on doing both of them. Uh, but yeah, we're gonna have a cosplay contest for both kids and for adults on Saturday. Cool. And we'll hand out some prizes. And uh, Budget Batman will be there, who is sort of like our unofficial mascot, which is basically just my brother in an Adam West uh, Batman. Yeah. Yep. Spoiler. Yeah. yeah. We were all wondering who 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 he was behind the mask. Oh no, but, I saw okay. the picture. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's pretty <laughs> obvious. I think that, it's that him. Late, so. That latest <laughs> set of pictures is like I know that jaw. All right. Yeah. We, all right. Well, look, the pig with the cute little cape on was too funny. That's, That's all right. I say. <laughs> what is that? Uh, what's yeah? What's the pig's whiskey. name? Oh, whiskey, whiskey the law hog. Is you will the... see whiskey in the booth. Whiskey's there. So, Josh, uh, tell us how to, to how to get tickets. Uh, sure. So, tickets will be available uh, on the day at the door. It's going to be August twentieth and the twenty first. So, you can just buy tickets right there. Or if you're in the Tipton County area, or you want to make a trip up there, uh, we will have them available in advance at Theo and Rose Ice Cream Parlor or at the Huffman Mason oh, Law Office. Yeah. So you can stop by either of those locations. They're both on the square in Covington. Yeah. Go get and, the uh, ice cream. Yeah. Oh, she does make, by the way, uh, side note, she does make the best ice cream anywhere around. Yeah. Yes. So. Mm. August 20th and 21st, uh, Covington Comic Con number two, man. We'll be there. Uh, but, guys, it's time to get out of here. We've, we've, we've used up our allotted time. 
So until next week, we are the Geek Patrol, and I am Joe Thorderson. I'm Alan Gilbreth. I'm Maximilian. I'm Josh Mason. And I'm Brandon Olmstead reminding you to send me something that makes me more positive about this DC situation. 